Welcome back. I'm Matthew, garden manager here at Earthworks. Today we're going to talk about palm trees. Here in Northeast Florida, there are many varieties of palm trees that we can grow. Some that look uh, comparable to tropical plants that you'll see down in South Florida, but can actually grow up here in North Florida and can take some pretty cold temperatures. We have native palms like sables that can grow here as well, thatch palms, and we also have some dwarf palms like the robolinis and also the palmettos. Today, David's going to talk about all the different types of palms that we can grow here in Northeast Florida. As you'll find rather quickly, there are a lot of interesting varieties. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good morning, my name is David Casella. I'm employed at Earthworks in Jacksonville, Florida. I work in the nursery on the nursery staff. I'm also a specialist in the palm trees uh, and give consultations to customers that inquire about the different varieties that uh, we carry and that'll grow in Northern Florida. Also the current president of the First Coast Palm and Cycad Society, which is a chapter of the International Palm Society, which the IPS is worldwide. And as you can see, I have my membership shirt on for the Central Florida Palm and Cycad Society. I'll do you a little 360 rotation. Anyhow, uh, as far as palm trees, they're not actually trees like a hardwood tree. They're not dicots, they're monocots, meaning they don't have vascular cambiums. They have uh, bundles of uh, phloem and xylem, which is your food and water conducting tissues. Uh, but I'll go over this one here. This is a Phoenix canariensis. Palms are labeled, most all plants, by the way, are, are labeled by a genus and a species name. The genus of this is Phoenix. Just think of this city in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix and the species is canariensis, uh, derived from where it's native to, the Canary Islands, a little island chain in the Atlantic Ocean off the west coast of Africa. It is a slow grower has a very robust trunk. By the way, it's also known as the pineapple palm. As you can see, the trunk where the previous fronds were growing that were cut show a uh, pineapple contour and shape. So it's also known as a pineapple palm, but it's native to the Canary Islands, which is a Mediterranean type climate. Think of the west coast of continents like California, kind of cool, moderate, not desert heat, not high humidity or high rainfall like Jacksonville, but they are able to grow here as long as you somewhat mock the native conditions. Uh, it grows less than a foot a year to a max height of about 30 feet. Uh, very drought tolerant, very cold tolerant down into the uh, mid-teens to, to, to upper teens. Uh, you want to feed this palm three to four times a year on a regular basis since uh, our Florida soils lack magnesium and potassium, so a good palm nutritional spray, a liquid or a granular spray would be great for these. And we do carry them in multiple sizes here at Earthworks. This is called the Bismarckia nobilis, commonly known as the Bismarck palm. Just think of Bismarck, North Dakota. It'd be an easy, quick reference to remember this tree, but this uh, type of leaf is called a pomate. There's two types of commonly known palm fronds or palm leaves. One is a pomate, similar to the palm of your hand, and the other one is a pinnate, which is uh, a feather. But, so this Bismarck nobilis has a pomate leaf, and I'll just show you the parts of the, the palm. You have the uh, petiole, or the leaf stem. This is the pomate fan leaf. Each one is a, is a leaflet, and then the entire part above the petiole is the blade. Uh, then you have your leaf base where the previous fronds at one time were growing and of course your trunk. Now as this matures, these old leaf bases will, uh, due to age and climatic influences, weather and so forth, these will uh, decompose and then you'll have a nice hard woody trunk here and it'll be considered uh, a hardwood trunk or clear trunk. Uh, this is a native to Madagascar, it's a slow grower. Madagascar is an island off the southeast coast of uh, Africa, the country of Africa, so it comes from a long way, but it will grow in northern Florida due to the fact that it's uh, semi-cold hardy, meaning I've seen it take temperatures down into the low to mid 20s. Slow grower grows to about 30 feet. This is really unique because this specimen here doesn't show the scale and magnitude of an adult size. I mean, it really pops in the landscape since it has this uh, silvery blue, it's called a glaucous wax on a leaf. And uh, that has developed and evolved over the years as an anti-deterrence maybe to a, a pest or a predator in its native habitat. 
but uh, as you can see it has a real chalky white color, uh, really unique. But they use these all in Universal Studios in uh, Orlando, Busch Gardens in Tampa. They're actually planting them on the interstates now, 95 South, North, uh, I-4 West and East uh, as an attraction to people that come into our state to visit the state of Florida. They really want to show the, the, vast, or the vast diversity of the palms we carry. But we carry them here at Earthworks and uh, if anyone would like to come in and take a look, I'd recommend you come here and talk to myself or one of my other associates and we'll gladly show you one of them. This palm to the right of me is Butia, B-U-T-I-A Capitata, was a scientific name commonly known as the Pindo palm. And it's not Pinto, as it's commonly mistakenly spelled as, it's P-I-N-D-O, Pindo palm. And it's native to Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, basically the northern part of South America. Very cold hardy. It has a pinnate, P-I-N-N-A-T-E, type of leaf, meaning feather, as you can see here. Uh, produces an edible fruit in South America where it's native to. They make a preserve and a jam, like a jelly. It's also commonly known as a jelly palm. Uh, the fruit, when mature, late summer, early fall, are about the size of gumballs. They're orangey, red in color, and they taste like a cross between a pineapple and a mango. Very, very flavorful, especially if the palm is uh, fertilized three to four times a year. This palm is a slow grower, maximum height, 20 to 25 feet. You can see some large old specimens around the older part of Jacksonville. Uh, they're a slow grower, very cold hardy, can take down to about 10 to 15 degrees, surprisingly being from Brazil and South America. Uh, it's also a unique palm. It's hybridized with a queen palm to produce a mule palm, so this is the parent plant. Fertilized three to four times a year with the palm fertilizer that's high in magnesium and potassium. Uses can be used as a specimen palm, a conversation piece in your yard. Uh, definitely, if you want to come up and take a look at one, we carry multiple sizes here at Earthworks. And we have here to the right of me, Oranga Engleri, commonly known as the Formosa palm or Taiwan sugar palm. Its native habitat is Southeast Asia, particularly the Taiwan area. Uh, it is very cold hardy, being from a tropical country. It can withstand temperatures in the upper teens to lower 20s, it is a clustering palm. Uh, I'll show you here. You can see the offsets or shoots that the mother host trunks eventually put up when they reach a certain age. And it's uh, really intricately interwoven with uh, nice fiber here. It gives it kind of an exotic look. I just want to point out two particular, I'll set that down. Uh, the frond has a two-tone color. The top is a glossy green and the underside is a really shiny, uh, slick looking silver with an uplight at night, man, that would really pop. Uh, this palm is a slow grower. It grows about a foot a year. Like I said, it's clustering, very drought tolerant, heat tolerant. And I would recommend fertilizing this palm three to four times a year with a palm fertilizer high in potassium and magnesium as our North Florida soils tend to lack those two elements. Uh, Uses can be used as a specimen palm in a yard, a focal point in the, the center of the driveway, front yard, or even the backyard, or particularly as a buffer plant. I have customers come in all the time and they ask me, well, I love palms, show me a palm that'll be good for a buffer or to block out. My neighbor just built a two-story house and we feel like we're losing our privacy because they look down from their two-story uh, window over to the pool. So we, this is one of the palms I recommend. It grows to about 20 feet. It's a clustering palm. Uh, very good using for buffers and privacy shields. Uh, definitely recommend this palm as one of those palms for, for that reason. If you'd like to come in and see one, I'll show you one here at Earthworks. We carry them in multiple sizes at 12501 Beach Boulevard. Again, my name's Matthew. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Give us a like. And uh, if you're in town, come visit our garden center. Until next time.